How can you tell real effort versus breadcrumbing with a narcissist? Honesty, vulnerability, consistent change. Take back your power. Absolutely. That's one of the taglines we have in the Clarity Challenge. Why would a person, this is a really good question. Why would a person who has strong boundaries, see through lies, constantly attract toxic people? I'm not talking about romantic relationship. It feels like friendships and it feels like classmates. In that exact instance, I would say either one, they have an energy door open. And so they're attracting that because of what they're putting out there. And two, I would say if they have strong boundaries, they might not be that strong if they're still involving themselves in those circles that are bringing those friendships in. And three, a lot of times a, a narcissist, let me just put it this way, sidestep, okay? Narcissist magnet, okay? You don't know who you are and you don't know boundaries. If you don't know the direction you're going, don't be surprised if you have a toxic person pull you off track. That's why like, I want to make sure people understand inside the week challenge, inside the clarity challenge, inside you know, even the Thriver Mastermind that we're building, like all these different pieces. I want people to know this is all in your power to change. This is all in your power to grow and continue to glow up. This is, your, this is all on you of saying, okay, now I'm going to set boundaries and I'm going to set the direction. When you set a direction, you start to build healthy boundaries beside it because you either have people that are coming into your life going the same way or you start to realize, hey, these people don't actually need to be in my life. How do I set healthy boundaries? Not un understand first off that boundaries are for you. They're not for the toxic person. They're not for the healthy person. They are for you. They apply to all relationships because they're applying to you. A healthy boundary is the level of shit you're going to take from someone else before you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm out. Okay. So how do you set healthy boundaries? The first aspect is getting below the lies that you believe, breaking any trauma bond, getting to the truth, and then getting to the place of who are you and what direction do you need to go? What's your vision? What's your values? How are you moving forward? Now, it sounds like a lot, right? Because that's why we break it down in 45 days in the Clarity Challenge to help people move forward. But here's the thing. Setting a healthy boundary is easy, easy if you know where you're going. You see, if you know that you're driving from the West Coast to the East Coast, you don't really get sidetracked with someone who wants you to go North because you're like, that's not my end destination. That's not the journey that I signed up for. That's not the way I want to go. That's not how I want to live my life. But when you're just on a road trip, it's really easy for someone to distract you and take you any direction if you're not locked into who you are and where you're actually going. That's why I would say the only narcissistic magnet that's consistent that I've seen that's consistent out there is someone who doesn't know who they are and as a result doesn't have healthy boundaries, doesn't have any boundaries, okay? Um, someone keeps saying about materialistic. A lot of nurses are very materialistic. All it is is just propping up their image. It's just another way to be able to prop up the image, okay? Um, yes, now if you want to meet with me, you can actually go to uh, rawmotivations.com. You can click the link in my bios. I do one-on-ones with people pretty much every single day. Um, typically like three to six people that I see every single day or some people that have like designated spots because I work on coaching people as well. So would love to be able to help just provide clarity. You can go in there, rawmotivation.com, click on the one-on-ones, uh, give you a little bit of idea. There's some testimonials in there, just people that have worked with me. So like, you know, it's not just me uh, of what's going on. Well, nurses use a child for supply. Absolutely. Easy supply there. Whenever I set a boundary, he disappears, says he'll go into therapy, and then he doesn't ever go. Okay, so that means you need to hold the boundary and get out of that relationship. Um, he has so many friends or when thought he's the best, I also felt no one would believe he was abusive. I kept the secret for years. Yeah. That's the, that's the ploy, the play of getting into the place where it feels so amazing. You tell everybody it's so amazing. Then they slightly pull back and then they pull back completely and you're left holding the bag of like, okay, well, I can't tell anybody now. Cause I've already said this. I've already said it's great. You know, after 30 years, his new supply is his older sister whom he never had any interest in. I had a strong relationship with them. Now none of them want to speak to me. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Narcissism in therapy, what does that look like? Uh, you normally don't see it very often. I'm not going to lie. Um, so hard to walk away, but yes, I need to go to how to get out of the trauma. Bond. I, I, I've gone through a little bit here on this live, so you can always watch this on YouTube. Um, but also I've got several videos on YouTube that specifically walk through trauma bond. Uh, it's not the same as like working me one-on-one, -on -one, but it does give you some of the bullet points of like, Hey, this is the steps. Uh, one of the first, one of the first things is getting to the place of like, what is the truth? You know, that's why we produce the journal, the journals out there. Uh, here it is. That's why like the journals out there from fantasy to reality, like that's a, 
a big a big seller right now of like people understanding like hey like we're actually trying to find the truth it's got over over 100 questions inside there trying to help you find clarity of like what is actually going on a journal for dealing with the aftermath of toxicity okay of like what's actually happening um you can get that links in the bio you can get a digital copy through my link a couple things like that um we're changing some stuff around we're trying to switch publishers so we can actually get it to people uh easier faster and cheaper so we're looking through a bunch of different options with that too um trying to figure out how we can get in people's hands faster uh but yeah was the first sign of being with a narcissist so i don't do it again it's a tough one. That's a lot. I would say one, learn your red flags and know. I've got a couple of YouTube videos of like, do you know your red flags? And there's like 30 signs, 30 red flags, different things like that. Um, some of it is like the speed of the relationship. Some of it is pushing boundaries. Um, some of it is not having any type of accountability, responsibility. Uh, like it's all about them. I mean, there's lots of different like nuances in one sense. There's not always like, oh my gosh, that's it. Uh, but it's like, okay, nope, they're checking the box on like five different things. Yeah, they're probably a nurses. I need to like back off or, or get out of that relationship. Uh, or if possible, can you collab with a woman narcissist so I can see it from that viewpoint? Uh, you just have to introduce me to a woman narcissist uh, because I haven't seen one. Uh, me and Lee Hammock, we do collab. We've done um, three meet and greets together. Uh, we've also done a workshop and a couple other things as well. Is their brain damage the same as a sociopath and a psychopath? I would say no. Future faking, do they really want it in the early days or is it just a hook? Um, so, okay, so there's two answers to this. So the, the first one that's like slightly off of your question is like when you're in the relationship and they're future faking, that whole aspect is just along the lines of like, I just want to avoid accountability in this moment. Um, when they're future vaguing in the, in the early stages, like we're talking like in the love bombing and the like first getting to know, that's the idea of like, maybe if I throw this out there, I'll be better. I'll look better. Like we'll be able to connect. We'll be able to like make this happen. There's a lot of different pieces that kind of like inter intertwine there in one sense. Um, so this live will be saved on YouTube. So you can grab it on YouTube under raw motivations. Feel free to be able to check that out. Um, if you want to be able to talk one-on-one, -on -one, um, would love to be able to talk and be able to interact with you. I'll go ahead and like drop the links in really quick so you can at least see it. But if you go to rawmotivations.com, that's actually where I schedule all my one-on-ones. And the cool thing is like we connect and we work with people all over the globe. Like it's not just uh, in the US. It's not just in one particular spot. So like I sometimes have people that I would meet with at, at like 5 a.m. you know in the morning so I can talk to someone who's going to bed in Australia or, or New Zealand or whatever. So like um, feel free when you go onto my website, it actually changes it automatically. So you can get to the place of, of just scheduling based on what's available for you. Okay. But yeah, rawmotivation.com, you can click on one-on-ones. Mm -hmm.